I am going to sell the angelic boots. Now, when you sell things in town, we look up town things. Sell. You can sell any item in any city for one coin. Magic items, 1d6 minus 1. Okay, so the angelic boots will sell for 1d6 minus 1. They will sell for 1d6. That I'm not, I'm going to roll 1. I've rolled a four and a six outside of the box. It's going to go into the box and it's going to be a one. Okay, I was wrong. That's worth five coins. Instantly, we have 59 coins. I'm going to keep track of my coins up here. I now have 59 coins. We sold the boots. I also rest, spend one coin. We recover all hit points. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just gonna cross all that out and start again down here, 23. Another thing that you can do is if you go into a town like this, you can purchase your advanced classes but they have requirements. Like Avenger, you have to avenge the death of a relative. Ruthless, you have to have killed 10 imps. Goblinator, you have to have killed 20 goblins. Miner, survived two dungeons. Gravedigger, lost another character. Gladiator, fought in an arena. Janitor, fill, killed all creatures from a sewer. It's like, I, I haven't done any of these things. The only one I have is the one where I could be the grave digger, having lost another character. So, we spend some money, we get the provisions back, I'm going to have to spend that one anyway. We buy new torches. But we're healed up. I should be, I have a lot of coin. Where is, I want to buy buy spend one coin and one torch and one provision i was hoping i could like buy a healing potion but no you can't <sighs> all right well that's fine i've gotten myself all healed back up we're good that way i'm not going to complain we're all right it had no armor, no armor. It had nothing there that we could find and pick up. So, we go back to the dungeon. Now, when you go back to the dungeon, you roll for monsters in each empty room. This, well, we don't have to go to any, we don't need to go back into this room. So, I don't need to count anything there. No need to roll for monsters there. I'm not going to go back into this room. No need to roll for monsters there. We're going to go to this corridor, and we're going to open up this door right here. So, let us check the door. Three. That is, uh, that is one and two. One and two is locked. It's right here. It's really, really easy. One is trapped, two is, and three is locked, and four plus is unlocked. That's a three. It's locked. I burn a torch. Again, always, the door is now unlocked. I roll. We are opening from a quarter. Let us find out what sort of room we have there. A five. A large room with two other doors. Okay, large room. Uh, we're, it's going to go up like five. Not four, but five. And then it's going to go across for five. And it's going to have a door here. And a door here. There we go. Not bad. This is going to be room C. Over here, room C. Now let us roll for contents. Seven. Four empty cells, but may have a secret passage. We're going to put an S with a circle, which means secret. So there we have that. Now we roll to see what monsters we have inside of here. If any, seven, yeah, no monsters. So we're going to search. 
secret passage. We search this room and we discover three. Nothing here. <laughs> okay, thank you. That was well timed. Oh man. Okay. We're going to go through this door right here. Check out if there's anything on this side. Check the door. Six. It's unlocked. We open up the door and we find open from a room that's right here. Six. It's a staircase with a door at the end. Ooh. And that's got a door. We're going to call this a E2. We're not going to go down E2 right now. I don't know that I'm strong enough to take on a dungeon boss. Those two living armors almost wiped me out. I need to get stronger before I head down. So we're going to finish up mapping out the first level here. Then we're going to go down to the second level. Because the third level is the dungeon boss level. Though I've always read that is there's the entrance, two floors, and then you go into the dungeon. So many people I've seen, it's there's the stairwell, a floor, and then the final dungeon level. I, 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 so we shall see. So instead, we're going to go through this door right here. Carefully, I check the door, and it is <gasps> locked. Of course it is. So I burn another torch. I'm down three torches. Again. And the door is unlocked. So now we find out, open from a room, that this is a six. A staircase with a door at the end. This... Huh. Oddly, this too is going to go to E2 because I'm weird that way. These are magical type doors. Well, so that, that door ends there. We're not going to go in there. We're not going to go any further. We're going to come back here and we're going to check this door up in this area. First, we check that door itself. I'm going to keep rolling the blue one. I like that one better. A two, locked. So I burn my fourth out of ten torches. And we find out what we have opened up. It's from a corridor. A one. A small room with another door. So we're going to make this this size. And since it's a prison, I think, you know, it's either a cell type thing, maybe an administer. It's a little cell type thing. Maybe an administrative area. <laughs> of course I wouldn't put that in the wrong place. So who knows what's actually here. We're going to find out. But it is a, a prison as stated. That's also D. I don't know why I put D1 there. Why did I put a 1 on there? Okay, I just... You can't tell what that is in the slightest right now. Just a big blurry smear. D with a circle around it. D with a circle around it. Okay, let's find out our contents. As we carefully dig around and root through the garbage in the room, we discover that the table continually has to be adjusted because my camera is sliding around on the tape. Okay, it is a five, a shelf of belongings with 1d6 treasures. We're going to 1d6 T. And then for monstrons, a six. 1d6 goblins again. Let's find out how many gobbos we're going to be beating up on here. Three. Huh. You know. Okay. We'll just rewrite three gobbos. I mean, it's exactly the same as what was up in room at number A. But that's okay. Hopefully this will go differently. Because I am going to roll for damage. I get to attack first because we went in silently. I, 
one point of damage. Which means that goblin explodes and does two points of damage to me instantly. Boom! <sighs> the remaining two gobbos do two points of damage to me, bringing me down to 20. I love goblins. Let's see how my... Oh, well, of course, it's a vampiric machete. I heal up to 21 points of damage. But I attack. A three. Three points of damage, and I wipe out the next gobble instantly. We're down to one gobble, which does, of course, 20. But, well, I mean, it does one, brings me down to 20. But I heal back to 21, and then I roll my attack. Two, of course. Same thing. It knocks me down to 20 from 21, but I attack and instantly heal back to 21. This is a game of attrition against the goblins. They don't stand a chance. Okay, that goblin is a debtor. Thank goodness for that. 1d6 treasures. Let's see how many treasures we find now that that goblin was a croaker. Three! Three treasures. And we're going to roll these all at the same time to find out what kind of treasures we find here in this prison. Uh, well, let's start with the fives. Oh, roll in the wonders column. Okay, well, I'm writing all over the inside of my box with my pencil. It's going to get scruffy looking. Look at that. I've written, you can't even see it. Look at that. I've written all over the inside of that. Anyway, though, this is a one. Anyway, though, this is a wonder. It's a goblin whistle. Goblins flee on hearing. So if I have goblins, I can just blow the whistle and the goblins run away. Goblin whistle. Goblins flee. So if I don't want to fight gobbos, I now don't have to fight gobbos. Okay, that's handy. And then there's a three, which is a valuable jewel worth 2d6 times 10. Pokey smokes, I need another d6. Where did I put all my, where did I put all my other d6? Here we are. Uh, 2d6 times 10, was it? 2d6, eight times 10, 80. That is a lot of coins. Valuable jewel worth 80. I'm just going to give myself the 80. I've uh, 59, 139 coins. I am rich beyond measure. Holy smoke rollies And then another wonder. So let us roll and see what the wonder is. And it is a two, a potion of luck. Oh. Ignores the next activated trap. So I guess I just instantly drink that, which I'm going to do. So that's up in, um, uh, ignore one trap, and then I have a box. So that's the potion that I've drank. Not bad. Not bad at all. In fact, yeah, I could kind of leave the dungeon now and be a rich person forever and ever. Blorbo, but not Blorbo, Farb the cat person, the lumberjack gravedigger, <laughs> could retire on the stuff that they have found. They're not going to, though, because they are a fool. Okay, we are going to go through this door right here and find out what sort of thing is inside. Check the door. Three. One, two, three. It's locked, right? And suddenly I can't remember the three. Yeah, three is locked. Two and three is locked. So I burn another torch. I swear, I am going through these like the wrath of God. I don't know that I've ever used this many torches in this sort of a, sh a short period before. But life is life. Life is life. So we are opening from a room. Let us see what we find. 
it is a three. It is a medium sized room. Uh, we'll make it longer, but there's no doors inside of there. And we'll call this one E. So it's a sloppy, terrible looking E, but that's where we are right now, that E room. I'm gonna mark an E over here, number E. I cannot do a proper E to save my life. Now let us room. <laughs> that was not English. I was trying to say now let us roll, but it kind of came out with a weak. What was that? <laughs> now let us roll and see what the room contents are. Seven. Four empty cells may have a secret passage. Another one of those scary rooms. Any sort. I keep writing on the inside of that box. Let us see if there are any monsters inside. Ah, double twi- uh, t Oh, I, I might die here. Honestly, there is a magic turtle. It has 30 hit points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And it does two damage. And it has sorcery. Let us check on the whole sorcery biz. When you get a one on the damage, this monster will cast a spell. Roll one die and add up the final damage value of the monster's next attack. I guess you just... It does its normal damage of one, and then you roll a die and add that to the value of the next attack. Okay. Okay. I understand that now. That makes more sense to my brain. I really wish I had a scroll. Or anything at all. Alrighty then, I don't, so I attack and instantly heal back up to 22, which is only one less than my grand total. And I do one point of damage, because of course. Now, for, for its credit, it does 20, uh, 2, which brings me down to 20. And then I heal back up to 21, and then I cause my attack. This is a war of attrition against me here as well. Okay. I do two. Two points of damage. I'm going to count it off down this way instead, just because I'm, I'm feeling that way. Well, this is going to be, like I say, a war of attrition. Especially when I roll like that. Well, I do heal. That did that did heal me. That was my... I healed up to 21. It does 2, which brings me down to 19. Which I heal back up to 20. Each time it attacks, I'm just going to take one point of damage. Hopefully, I'm going to survive. 3. And... Uh, Three. I've got this written all weird and goofy there, so I'm down by one. Nineteen. I do four. One, two, three, four. It does another point of damage to me. I have got to hope I can take this thing out. Five. That's not bad at all. One, two, three, four, and five. I take another point of damage. So let's see. I, I'm going to do it. Oh, especially now. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I take a point of damage from the turtle's attacks. And then I continue beating on this thing with my vampiric machete. Another five points. Now I'm doing really good. One, two, three, four, five. I, is that another one? That looks like an extra one. It's only got two left. I wasn't counting properly. I'm down to 15 because it hurts me. And I, with my vampiric... 
I do one, of course. So I'm down to 14. Now I'm going to roll for my final attack. The turtle has been vanquished. Oh my god. I forgot to do the whole sorcery thing. I can't remember if I rolled any ones, but that would have only taken away one or two points of damage further from me. I wouldn't be any further or in any real worse shape than I am in right now. I wish my taped camera on a stick would just stay in one place and I wouldn't have to keep moving the table. Okay, it has nothing and the room has nothing. All I did was get the snot beat out of me in that place. However, I am going to search for a secret passage or item. Four. You have found a hidden chest. Yes. Now, oh, what page was it for chests? You know, I can't remember where it said. Uh, no, that's a dungeon action. Open a chest. If you find a chest, roll two dice. The die with the highest number is how many coins. The lowest is how many treasures. However, if they're both the number one, it was empty, activates a trap. So now we're going to go and roll these. The higher one is a six. There were six coins, so that's 145 in total. And two treasures. Son of a gun. Boy, that table, just, it's, the camera's just sliding around really, really quick. So, we have to roll on the treasures. Let's see what we find in the treasure. That's two of them, wasn't it? Yeah. There's a three, which is another jewel worth 2d6 times 10. Eight, another 80. You know, we'll just go plus 80 right there. And then, for the next treasure, a one. Oh my goodness, a health potion. You know what? I am going to drink that health potion right now because it brings you back up to your full health. I now have 23 hit points. I am unhurt and undamaged once again. Thank goodness for that. Farb is actually doing pretty good. He's got that spell. He's got the goblin boot, the elven boots, not the goblin boots, those five hit points. That vampiric machete is super duper good. So what we're gonna do is, this door right up here at the tippy top, we're gonna open that up and see what's up in this direction. First, we check the door. A four, unlocked, thank goodness for that. Okay, okay. It is opening from a corridor? Yes. So we roll on the open from a corridor table. A one small room with another door. Uh, we're going to make this, it looks like a corridor, but we're going to make sure it's R room F. And it has another door. So that's not bad. R F R F. Okay, just another room. Let us check for room contents. Is I right on the inside of my box again? A four. Six cages hanging in the cell may have a secret passage. So the little S right there. Check for monsters that there may be within. Ten. There are, oh, this, oh, God, that, ah. Uh, there are three fungoid. They have four hit points. That's not the bad part. They do two damage. That's not the bad part. You can loot them. That's not the bad part. They regenerate. That's the bad part. Because when they regenerate, it's actually in this direction. No, it is in this direction because it's the monster stuff. Regenerate. When you get a one on the damage roll, this monster recovers six hit points. Oh my god. That's a lot. Okay, okay. 
Okay, we're going to be entering uh, into rest mode in 10 minutes, so I have to set my, my PS4 controller and such so that my PS4 does not go to sleep. I have to find the new place to put the controller. Okay, we're going to have to go through combat, and then I'm going to have to call this one. Because I attacked the fungoid. I also, well, I would heal, but I'm not going to. Two points of damage, and there's three of them, so they do six. Which, I'm only going to subtract five because I heal, which is 22, 21, 20, 19, 18. And then I attack. Hey, doing six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's two of them down. So one of them attacks me, does, uh, well, at this point, it just does two. And then I heal one, so that's a 17. So I attack, and so I attack, do three. It's still alive. It does two. I heal one, so I'm down to 16, and ba-boom, that fungoid is dead. Not bad at all. What else was in that room? Nothing at all? Yeah, just a bunch of cells and stuff. I can search for a secret passage, so let's do that. I activated a trap, but this potion negates the trap entirely. So I am going to now erase this because I have negated the trap. We don't have to worry about it. That was a nice potion. We are here. The grave digger, the lumberjack, the cat person. Oh, I was supposed to sell times two. Oh, that wouldn't have helped. I've got a ton of coins, like 200 plus. I have the potion and the goblin whistle. We have a little bit of provisions. I need torches desperately. We're doing really, really good because character-wise, yeah, I've only got 16 hit points now, but I will have more, and we have stomped on all of these creatures. So if I put a little, oh, God, golly, Miss Molly, let's make it just a star, and then I put a star over here, right up here to indicate location. So next time, we're gonna come back to Farb in the prison of the Dying Vow. It has been a hard, bloody battle, leaving corpses everywhere. Hokey, smoky, but we're here in the prison of the Dying Vow. So until next time, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is, in fact, a very good thing.